Okay. Welcome to the ninth episode of Pearls of Wisdom on the Psychology of Emerging Adulthood Research Lab's YouTube channel. We're joined today by a doctoral student at Pearl, Sasha Havner. Sasha, you and I have known each other in various ways throughout the years. Is that right? Yes, that is. So we originally met when, do you remember? When I was in my master's and you were the clinic person. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And then we knew each other again as lab members. Mm -hmm. um, and now here we are on YouTube. Here we are. Okay, let's get started. I'm just going to ask you, first of all, how did you become interested in joining Pearl? Um, I've wanted, like, going to grad school or joining Abby's lab specifically? Joining Abby's lab specifically. Um, so the lab I was working at at the time had a postdoctoral student mm -hmm. who was a previous member of Abby's lab, which is Natalie Wilhelm Churchill. And mm -hmm. um, we became friends and I kind of learned to learned about OISE, learned about the CCP program, learned about Abby's lab. Um, and then um, Natalie left and I was applying to grad school and I applied to UTSC, but I really didn't want to leave Toronto and OISE was in Toronto and it was a clinical site program. So there I was applying to OISE and um, Abby, her research is so cool. She's so cool. She's a Canada research chair. She's, you know, doing research about stuff that really matters, stuff that's really relevant, like parenting, families, like that was really up my alley. Emerging adulthood is really cool. Um, I don't know how many times I can like validly use cool as a descriptor, but uh, yeah. So, so many as it applies. <laughs> so that's how I ended up here. All right, excellent. So let's switch over and talk about your research. So what are you researching and how did you become interested in it? So I'm researching, what I'm researching is still a work in progress, but um, the topics I'm interested in are adverse childhood events or experiences, which are um, kind of serious events or harmful events that have occurred to people during their childhood. Um, and they are linked to like a number of health outcomes um, in a negative way and um, are a pretty, pretty big risk factor for a lot of uh, maybe risky or harmful behaviors. Um, and I am looking at addiction, so that's very relevant there. And um, I'm also interested in executive function. And so like cognitive, functioning, social cognitive functioning, um, which is basically like how well can people kind of, uh, I hate trying to describe executive function, um, kind of like the task manager in your brain, like how well can people kind of switch between different tasks, how well can they um, prioritize tasks, plan things, um, that kind of thing. So yeah. Look and how did you become interested in that topic? So my other supervisor, Lena Quilty at CAMH, is have been an addictions researcher for a long time. Abby has as well, so it was a good kind of common ground. Um, Lena's looking at executive function and addiction, so that was a bit of a um, borrowed interest for me. And um, I really like the kind of family context and environmental context that Abby's line of research brings in, which is where I was drawn to the adverse childhood events. And Sasha, are you an emerging adult? I don't think so. What definition are we using? <laughs> 18 to 25 or 18 to 29? Uh, I would fall under the second. <laughs> okay, so under the looser parameters of emerging adulthood, you would qualify. Sure, yes. Do you feel like an emerging adult in terms of those five characteristics that Jeffrey Arnett identifies? No. Feeling in between, self-focused, possibilities. No, you do not feel like. In the weary adult side of things. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to cast your mind back to when you were an emerging adult, sure. what felt the most true for you at that time? What do you mean by true? Salient. So which felt like the most resonant to your experience as an emerging adult? In terms of Jeffrey Arnett's? Yeah, in terms of those characteristics or... I don't know what they are off the top of my head. <laughs> so 
instability, identity yeah. exploration, okay. self-focus, mm -hmm. um, possibilities, mm -hmm. feeling in between. I would say, what's possibilities? So possibilities is just thinking about all the different um, options that are in front of you. Okay. So feeling like you have a lot of, there are a lot of possibilities, be they professional or personal, that are all kind of ahead of you still. Right. Um, how far back are we projecting here? <laughs> Since you were 18. Since I was 18, I would say definitely identity exploration. Okay, how so? Um, I feel like as a kid, you're exposed to a lot of different kinds of adults as you grow up. And you meet some who you really want to be like, and you meet some you really don't want to be like, and you meet some with a bit of both. And you kind of realize you have the control to like pick the kind of adult you're going to become. And trying to figure out who that was or is um, would probably be the most salient thing for me during that time. COVID is still with us and it's been around now for a little more than a year in Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, how are you getting through COVID at this point? Uh, Well-timed question because you caught me right on the um, like upward recovery from a bit of a burnout streak. But things that have been helpful for me have been allowing myself to do nothing, allowing myself to do things slowly, um, reducing screen time and turning off notifications. Yeah, those, those are my main. Those are really helpful. And so are those are those what helped you transition out of your burnout streak? They were, they were just pure necessity at that point. <laughs> right, right. How did you realize that you were burnt out? Um, I just couldn't be bothered <laughs> with, with anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It felt like too much. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to um, feel motivated about important things happening in your life. Like I, I'm definitely linking a lot of my burnout to work from home. My husband mm -hmm. works in person and like we kind of discuss a lot of the differences much of the time and mm -hmm. um, all the important things in your life are taking place through your computer screen. So like if you don't open your computer, they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So they're all contained in this space that we're all so tired of, but they also feel a little distant because they're just kind of on our devices. Right. And at the same time, they're like our only source of connection. Like mm -hmm. part of me was like, oh my God, I have to do that interview with Daniel. I completely forgot. I'm still not ready for this. And then there's another part of me that's like, this was a really fun, engaging conversation. And I haven't actually reflected on these things or like got to enjoy talking to you in a long time. Yeah, it is really nice to talk to you too. Yeah, it's hard, I think, when we're burnt out or we're experiencing that low mood dip to then do the thing that often helps us feel better. So true. Behavioral activation. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to move into the rapid fire portion of the interview. We're asking you a series of quick fire questions. Okay. Ready? Yes. What was the first concert you attended? Coldplay. What is your favorite restaurant in Toronto? Mother's Dumplings. If I didn't have blank, I don't know how I'd get through the day. My partner. <laughs> Astrology is? Amazing. What's your sign? Taurus. If you hadn't gone into Oise's program, what would you be doing right now? Ooh. Being a research assistant and part-time tattoo artist. What is your favorite word? Locatious. Did I say it wrong? Is it loquacious? It's loquacious. Oh God. Okay. That's okay. We'll keep going. <laughs> Who would you cast to play you in a movie? Oh, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, actually. Um, but I can't remember what I thought. I've been told I look like, oh God, what's her name? You know, Night Nurse from like Daredevil? Rosario Dawson. I've been okay. Yeah. Really yep. Nice. So Rosario Dawson. Yes. Final answer? Yes. What's your hidden talent? 
I used to be able to make a farting noise with my collarbone and my neck. <laughs> wow. Used to or still can? Um, I can't do it as easily. <laughs> okay. What was your first job? Um, hmm, Tim Hortons. No, Kumon. Kumon. What's the one thing you're most excited about in 2021? Mm -hmm. Both my best friends are having babies. All right. Congratulations to you and to them. <laughs> Sasha, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for doing this, even though you, part of you really didn't want to. <laughs> and for everyone watching, please hit like, please subscribe, and we'll see you for the next episode. Thank you Thanks so much, so much Sasha. Daniel.